Today, I'm going to be talking to you about the work that we're doing developing strategies for future proofed COVID 19 vaccines, which would hopefully be resistant to variants. So, as most of you know, the way that vaccines work is they train the immune system to recognize a part of the viral surface. And here you can see the SARS CoV 2 virus, which is the virus that causes COVID 19 in this lovely illustration by Kate Patterson at Garvin. And so vaccines expose the immune system to a protein and then B cells generate antibodies to this protein. So here you can see the B cells here in yellow. And the goal is to make B cells which block the virus from entering cells. So antibodies that are able to do this block the virus from actually entering cells are called neutralizing antibodies. So current vaccines work by exposing the immune system to the spike protein, which is shown here in blue. And the immune system makes all antibodies to all different parts of the spike. And here again, you can see a bigger version of just the spike. But what's been found by various studies around the world, that 90% of the antibodies that are produced that can actually neutralize the virus, so stop it from entering cells, all seem to be targeting this particular part of the spike here, which is called the receptor binding domain. But even within the receptor binding domain, not all parts of it are equal. And here you can see in this picture, these green parts of the receptor binding domain, um, those parts are actually highly variable. So they differ a lot between different strains of the virus. And unfortunately, the majority of the antibodies produced in a vaccine response or following natural infection seem to target these really variable sites. And what this means is that as new strains of the virus emerge, the protection that your antibodies give you against these new strains becomes less and less. But I would like to stress that the vaccines are still very effective at preventing hospitalization and they do stop the spread. So this means that we need to continually update the vaccines over time, which, which does work, but it does mean that health strategies are constantly playing catch up. And there's this really concerning risk that the virus will mutate faster than health strategies can cope with. So there's this really strong goal which is to produce a vaccine against regions of the virus that the virus can't afford to mutate. So to better understand these regions of the virus that it can't afford to mutate, we looked across the genomes of 192,000 different coronavirus. And this shows that some parts of the virus are very variable. And in this diagram, they're actually shown in red. Whereas other parts of the virus uh, don't vary at all between different variants. And so here you can see that in white. So they're very conserved. And so these are really the parts of the virus that we want to target. One particular site of the virus um, called the class four site has been really found to be really highly conserved and it's really an ideal target for vaccine responses. But unfortunately, it's been found by various studies around the world that it's very difficult to generate neutralizing antibodies against this particular site. So we really developed the goal of understanding immunization strategies to generate antibodies to these conserved sites of the virus. And to do this, we had access to these incredible mouse models from a collaborator in Germany. And these mice produce human antibodies in response to vaccination. So that's an incredible tool. So we immunize these mice with the receptor binding domain of the SARS-CoV-2 virus, so the virus that causes COVID-19. What we also did is we immunized them with the receptor binding domain of related viruses. And so for this, we used the virus that actually caused the original SARS outbreak in 2003 and a related bat virus. And the reason why we did this is this class four site is so highly conserved that it's actually virtually identical, even in these distantly related strains of the virus. And so doing this, we can now ask the question 
of which immunization strategy is the best at inducing antibodies, particularly to this really highly conserved site. So when we did this, you can see here that what we found when we immunized the mice with the receptor binding domain from SARS-CoV-2, so the virus that causes COVID-19, the majority of the response was really targeting this really variable site, which is shown here in white. And this matches what's been seen in other studies in the response of humans to vaccination or infection. And that's unfortunate. But in contrast, when we looked at the response following immunization with either the, the bat related virus or the original SARS virus, actually the majority of the response targeted this really conserved site. So this ideal target, this key site of vulnerability. So this really suggests that potentially even when you're trying to protect against SARS-CoV-2, you actually should be potentially considering other variants as the vaccine target. But as I've mentioned before, neutralizing antibodies are those that not just bind to a site, but actually block its entry into human cells. And so we know we can generate antibodies that bind to these class four sites, but we now need to know whether these antibodies are neutralizing. And that's important because it has been seen that it's really hard to generate neutralizing antibodies to this class four site. So now we ask the question, do these strategies generate neutralizing antibodies to this site? So to do this, we looked at the response, the vaccine response, the immunization response from these humanized mice. We expressed all these different antibodies, and then we determined what site they bound to on the SARS-CoV-2 virus. And then we actually tested them for neutralization. So overall, we were able to find 15 antibodies that bound to the SARS-CoV-2 virus and these other two related viruses, the bat virus and the original SARS virus. And so this is important because if something binds to, to multiple viruses, it's probably binding to these conserved sites, which don't differ between the different viruses. So sure enough, when we determined where exactly they bound, we found that 14 out of these 15 bound this class four site that we're interested in. However, when we test them for neutralization, only one of these 14 antibodies was actually able to block the entry of the virus into human cells. So this is a really key finding that we were able to find many antibodies that neutralized, sorry, that bound, but only one that neutralized. And so we wanted to understand this better. What's the difference between these antibodies that bind to the same site? Why can some of them block the virus from entering human cells and some not? So to do this, we solve the crystal structure of our neutralizing antibody, shown here in purple, in complex with the SARS-CoV-2 virus. And because there's actually only been so, previ uh, so few previously described neutralizing antibodies to this site, we were actually able to compare it to all the other previously described antibodies. And we found that all of these actually shared the exact same mechanism. So you can see here that when they bind to the virus, they create this clash. And what this clash means is that the virus is no longer able to bind to its attachment on human cells. In contrast, here in orange, you can see a non-neutralizing antibody. And this non-neutralizing antibody bound to virtually the exact same site. But the difference is these non-neutralizing antibodies have a different orientation. So when they bind, they no longer create this clash. So the virus is still able to bind to its attachment point on human cells. So this is a really key finding because now that we know the characteristics of antibodies that actually able uh, to block it from entering human cells, we propose that this is what you should be looking for in vaccine responses, actually testing whether antibodies with these features are present. So overall to conclude, we and others think that it's really clear that next generation vaccines need to elicit antibodies to these really conserved sites and this will help protect us from future variants. We found that the receptor binding domains of different related viruses actually differ in their ability to induce antibodies to these key sites of vulnerability. And in fact, more of the response 
uh, to the original SARS virus or the bat precursor was directed against this site than with SARS-CoV-2. So potentially we should be considering these as vaccine targets. However, we also found that most of the antibodies to this key site of vulnerability are not able to neutralize. And all the antibodies that can neutralize share these key structural features. So they, they create a clash so that the virus can no longer um, attach to human cells. And so it's antibodies with these features that we should be assessing as part of the target to vaccine responses. So I'd really like to stress that this work was, was done by many. It was a big collaborative work. Um, there was a huge number of people in Garvin involved in this work. And in particular, I'd like to flag Catherine Jackson, who did a lot of the antibody analysis, and many people from Daniel's Chris lab who made those beautiful structural images. There was also a lot of collaborators from other institutes in Australia and around the world. And I'd particularly like to flag um, Stu Turville, who did that lovely neutralization studies, and, and Hans Martin's group, who gave us access to those amazing models. And I just want to also flag our funding sources, so this work was largely made possible through the, the philanthropic funding of people who donated to the, the Garvin COVID-19 um, catalytic funding appeal. So thank you very much.